One of the most fascinating predictions of special relativity is that of time dilation. What is time dilation? So if time is being measured by two observers who are in relative motion with respect to each other, then their measurements are going to be different. Now in classical or Newtonian physics, we think of time as something which is absolute and very much independent of the observer or the reference frame in which the observer is situated in. But in relativity, things are a little bit different. In relativity, time is very much dependent on the reference frame from which the measurement is being made. And we can prove this with a very simple thought experiment. So let's imagine that there is a train. And this train is moving with a certain velocity v in a particular direction. And inside the train, there is a particular setup. In the ceiling, there is a bulb which can emit light. And right below at the floor, there is a detector which can detect the presence of light. Now let's suppose we switch on the light for an instant and a light ray comes out and this light ray travels a particular distance and reaches the floor and it is detected by the detector. So let's define two physical events. Physical event number one. Physical event one happens when light is being emitted by the bulb at point A and physical event number two happens when light reaches point B and is being detected by the detector. I want to measure the time period between these two physical events. So basically, I want to measure the time period which it takes for light to travel from point A to point B. Now let's also define an observer. Let's imagine that there is an observer inside the train. So for an observer inside the train, this entire setup of the bulb and the detector is at rest. So for him, the time period it takes for light to go from point A to point B can be defined very simply as distance divided by speed. So let's say that the time period measured by this person who is inside the train is represented by del T0. So del T0 will therefore be equal to the distance traveled by the light ray which let's suppose is the height of the train H and the speed of light C. Now, if you remember the second postulate of STR, it says that the speed of light is always a constant. It does not matter uh, from which inertial frame of reference you are measuring in. So we will always use the speed of light to be C. So the time period for light ray to go from point A to point B is equal to height by speed of light C. Now, if we make the same measurements, but from a different observer's perspective, let's suppose that we have the similar situation, but the observer, instead of being inside the train, is now on the platform. So the train is moving with a certain velocity, but the observer is looking at the same physical events, but from the platform. So for this particular observer, the light ray will have traveled a different path. So when the light is being emitted by the bulb at point A, the train is at a particular location. But because the train is moving, by the time the light ray reaches the detector, the train would have traversed or traveled a certain particular distance in the forward direction. So the effective path which is traveled by this light ray as it goes from the bulb to the floor is not a vertically downward direction, but rather is along the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle where this is point A and this is point B. And let's say this is point B dash, which is uh, the, where the detector would be after the train has traveled a certain uh, point in time. So let's suppose that the time it takes for the bulb, uh, for the light ray to go from the ceiling to the floor is del T. In that case, the distance which uh, the train has traveled in that period of time d let's suppose is equal to the velocity multiplied by that time period okay so if the distance traveled is velocity of the train multiplied by the time period the path length would therefore be equal to h square plus v square del t square okay so now from this observer's perspective i want to calculate the time period it takes for light ray to go from the bulb to the detector as it moves along this particular path. So it's quite simple. So the time period del T is equal to the distance which is traveled. The distance is this distance root over h square plus v square del T square divided by the speed of light. Again, I'm going to take the speed of light as C because C is a constant in all inertial frames of reference. I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, rearrangement of these terms. So let's say we take the square of both these two sides. I'm going to get del T square is equal to H square by C square plus V square by C square del T square. 
okay now i have already obtained that h by c is nothing but the time period measured by an observer in the train frame of reference so i'm going to substitute this expression here it's going to become del t square is equal to del t naught square plus v square c square by del t square let's take the right hand side uh, the second term in the right hand side to the left hand side i'm going to get del t square minus v square c square del t square is equal to del t naught square or del t square if i take it as common it becomes this multiplied by 1 minus v square by c square is equal to del t naught square if i rearrange it a little bit more and take out the square terms i get del t is equal to del t naught by root over 1 minus v square by c square so as you can see here del t is the time period measured between the two physical events in which light leaves the bulb and reaches a detector from the perspective of an observer in the platform and del t naught is a time period between the exactly same two physical events but from the perspective of an observer inside the train and they are not the same because of this particular factor root over 1 minus v square by c square and since v here is not exactly equal to 0 this term is going to have some kind of a value and therefore these two terms are not going to be the same this is the expression for time dilation in special theory of relativity but we don't really experience time dilations in normal day-to-day -day lives because the velocities with which bodies move are not necessarily uh, that high so that this particular term is uh, can create much effect let's look at a few examples in the first case i have taken the example of uh, let's suppose a very fast moving jet fighter plane okay so we have fighter planes which can fly at a top speed of greater than uh, 3000 kilometers per hour which is a very very fast moving jet fighter so if i put these values in the expression that we have obtained so the time period difference between a fighter pilot which is flying that kind of a plane and somebody on the ground comes out to be of the order of if i perform the calculations of the order of 0.0000000385% which is a very very small difference but if i uh, make the same calculations for let's suppose some other particle which is moving at the velocity of let's say half the velocity of light in that case the difference comes out to be order of 15 percent and if i take the time dilation for some particle which is moving at let's say 90 percent the speed of light the time dilation comes out to be 129.46 percent so as you can see in our normal day-to-day -day lives where we encounter velocities which are much much less compared to the speed of light the time dilations effects are non-significant at all they're insignificant but when we talk about uh, velocities closer to the speed of light in those cases the time dilation effects become quite significant now before we end this video you may ask a very simple question can we make a general statement about the nature of time by this very simple thought experiment in which we looked at how light moved from one point to another well uh, let's think of it this way when we think of time uh, usually we experience time as some sort of a abstract medium in which we are moving as one event happens one after another but in physics time is a measurable quantity it is quantifiable and when we measure time we usually do so by looking at uh, periodic motion or repetitive events for example earth repeatedly moves around the sun so we can define one year as one revolution when earth moves around the sun or we can define one day as one rotation as earth revolves around its own axis or we can uh, define other time periods by looking at the periodic motion of uh, uh, pendulums by looking at periodic motion of some other oscillatory behavior or by looking at the periodic motion of clocks clocks are basically mechanical systems which end up giving you some kind of a periodic motion but the idea of time dilation which comes due to relativity is independent of the mechanics of clocks or the mechanics of pendulums or anything else it is a general statement about the nature of time so the postulates of str end up giving a very general statement about the nature of time which is equally relevant to the mechanics of clocks or your biological clock or the motion of a pendulum or anything so if you end up measuring time by taking any one of these reference periodic motion you will end up measuring a dilated or stretched out time period so this is known as time dilation